Hi there. Welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. We're here with another COVID conversation. How's it going, Jamie? It's going, going very well. We were just discussing my, I had kind of a debacle here because of sharing Zoom space with kids. Yeah. So I've got like a uh, microphone switched and my kids somehow took my microphone, which has this little like boom. Mm -hmm, the stand thingy. Inside. It was straight up and in an angle. I don't even know. I didn't even know how to. That's hilarious. Down because for, <laughs> you know, four years, three years, it's been like that. So anyway. right. Yeah. No, we're doing more things like that too. The kids are using the webcam and it's, yeah, yeah it's just bizarre. Yep. But hey, it's cool fun. that they can do it. It is. Oh, it's so much fun. And our kids have been playing together on online it's sometimes. super cute. It like is. yesterday, I think it was like pushing four hours. <laughs> they were because we had, uh, yeah, we had someone come by to estimate our, um, our driveway for the asphalt. Uh -huh. We have to get our driveway uh -huh. fixed because of the repairs we had for the house. So we were out there kind of, you know, talking with the guy mm -hmm. and I came back in and I was like, wow, they're still in they're there. Still they, in. they had a blast. The first thing this morning, that's what they wanted to do. So yeah, no, it's super cute. And I'm really glad that they get to do that. So yeah, Jamie's kids and my kids are doing some, I, I don't even get it. They're doing a multiplayer game and, but it was adorable because like, I think they started shortly after lunch yesterday and I had to like tell my son multiple times, it is dinner time. You need to be done right like now and so he comes down we eat dinner he says okay mom after lunch can I play with the Hamptons some more I'm like sweetie this was dinner <laughs> right <laughs> after lunch total track of time <laughs> okay so my kids they this is this is our our COVID reality is that yeah. the kids will come and say did we have lunch? Because sometimes if I, like if we have a day where they don't have a whole lot going on, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll let them sleep up until like their first right. Zoom meeting, you know, and mm -hmm. they're up at 10. Mm -hmm. They're not really hungry till 11. And so right. we have and then that's breakfast basically, at lunchtime. Yeah. And then we'll have like maybe a snack, but usually it's just dinner mm -hmm. after that. And they'll be like, what was for lunch? Is yeah. This dinner. And also <laughs> I know it's the daylight, you know, yeah. Because oh, that's it. true. Yeah, it's not really getting dark. I mean, it is, but probably not until what midnight. I'm not. I don't see it dark ever. Yeah, I'm trying to. Th I think maybe around. I don't even know. Maybe yeah, ten thirty. Eleven. It's dark. Yeah. yeah. No, because you know I've gone to bed some nights at ten thirty, and it's still not all the way dark. You know, it's not like black dark. It's just dusk. Yeah. Yep. It's no, it is. Coming. It's so bizarre. It's you know, and there's there's very. Uh, it's just, it's not as easy to gauge the days of the week anymore. It's mm -mm. crazy. Or dates, if you're not paying attention, like oh, there's yeah. certain dates that are important for different things, but you know, it's so funny to look at our calendar because it's so blank. I mean, there are a few things, right. but it used to be every day of the week. Okay. Don't forget this. Don't forget this, this person here, this thing here. Yeah. And like, I mean, I, I would laugh at how full the calendar mm -hmm. was with reminders for myself. And now it's the opposite. Yeah. Now it's the opposite. It's like every day is the same. Nothing. What do we have to do today? Yeah. Pretty much nothing. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Like that yeah, side of it, been, I'm actually really enjoying. Nice. Yeah. So one sad thing though, yesterday and the day before. So in the last two days, I have seen so much anger and mm. social media hatred like mm -hmm. geared toward individuals not not like not toward the comments. governments and stuff well some of it is because of that but geared mm -hmm. toward personal people so someone will make a post mm. and in most cases it's relatively benign and then you've got a mm -hmm. hater that gets on that's a friend of the person you know right. that's right being mean or relative you know yeah and, and being really mean and I'm just wondering if we're getting to the point where the novelty's worn off, people are getting anxious and not anxious in the sense of like, oh no, what's going to happen? But like, man, mm -hmm. we're tired of this. We're, we're tired, tired of, of this. this. Yeah. Particularly in places, I think like Alaska, where we're not as hard hit. I think yesterday there were no cases. Mm -hmm. there, it's all single digit cases at this point trickling in. And I think people are starting to get a little anxious or stir crazy or maybe just maybe it is the the effects of long-term chronic anxiety that's at a level that you're not detecting that's what i mm -hmm. sometimes find in myself is i'm not i won't be aware that i'm anxious about something 
but it just affects everything, especially I get it. Yeah. cumulatively. I and there know. is mistrust, you know, you know, was all of this necessary? Who knows? You and I are never going to be able to answer that. No. And so I, I try to just choose to not dwell on that all the time. I recognize, no, I don't think that governments are infallible. I think that there's lots of politicking going on, but that's not going to change the fact that my family and I have been ordered to stay home. It doesn't change the fact that I don't want us to get sick. And I don't know. So I I see it. I see kind of both sides. I see the side that is just like, guys, you have no idea how bad this could get, which is true. And there's also, um, guys, this was such an overblown thing. And maybe it is. We're never going to know for sure. Right. I think that's the hard part is you're never going to know. It's like... um you know, taking vitamin C when it's flu season. Did the vitamin C keep you from getting the flu or were you not going to get it anyway? Or the flu And honestly, yeah, honestly, it's like, sometimes it just gets into statistics. Like, um, I don't want to get, I don't want to get super political, but you'll hear people like, I am against this thing for this reason, but that doesn't change the fact that, okay, I, I can make it personal instead of political. We had, a very traumatic birth experience, which you know about, lots of our Mm. listeners know about. So I'm, I'm not anti home birth. I think that people have the, the freedom to choose whatever they want to do. But I also recognize like if we had had a home birth, our son would have died and who knows, maybe I would have. And so what I get upset with is people who are super militant, who are like, this is the only way to do it. You have to have a home birth. And I'm like, well, what about what about our family where this, and so I feel like you and I who haven't been hit crazy hard in terms of like our, our husbands are still employed. Our families haven't run out of food. Nobody in our immediate spheres gotten sick. We can be like, Hey, maybe this was an overblown thing, you know, or at the very least like glad this didn't get worse. And, and yet there are people who today are going to bury loved ones who that, that doesn't matter to them anyway. So there's just, there's so many facets to it. And I don't think we're ever going to be able to, you know, figure out exactly all of the what ifs. What if we had shut things down sooner? What if we hadn't shut things down at all? I mean, you could go through all of the extremes and who knows? Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, our theme for the the COVID devotional in the hashtag be the light it's, it's um, you know, that's kind of the theme for the devotional is being the light in dark times And I think one of the ways that we can be the light is to try and temper everything with grace and try to check Mm -hmm. those visceral reactions that come up. Um, Even if you've been hit in some way, you know, to recognize, okay, this Mm -hmm. is coming from pain. This isn't coming from me disliking this person. And, you know, right. so I think so much of what we can do is pretty simple in terms of, you know, recognize when those visceral reactions come out, mm-hmm. check them, um, put them through the filter of, of the Holy Spirit, or yeah. you know, take those thoughts captive, beat mm-hmm. them into submission to Jesus and the way he would like you yeah. to respond, or, and even just refrain from commenting if, if it's not going to be nice, kind of like we tell our kids, if you're not going to say something nice, just kind of keep it to yourself and let that person sure. have their yeah. thing. Is and it I'm, going I'm to edify it to myself not, as well? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think coupled with that is just the humility to, to understand you don't know all the contingencies. Right. I my mind is open enough that I can see like the entire 180 de- degree spectrum to this shutdown saved us from what could have been something in like bubonic plague proportions all the way to like, this was totally unnecessary and just fear monitoring. I can see the whole spectrum Mm -hmm. and I recognize that I can't in my mind, like I'm not a computer program that's omniscient that has all the data to be able to plug in these variables. I have no idea, you know, what would have happened if this, or what might've happened if that. And so again, like the fact that, no, we're not getting the full picture, doesn't change that there's a dangerous disease out there. We've been ordered to stay home and there's not a whole lot else we can do. Right. And we need to obey authorities according Mm -hmm. to scripture, you know, why just, but, 
And the other thing is with you're talking, you kind of glossed over like statistics, you know, or like you're not a computer. We have all these computer, I've seen a lot of social media posts with these are the computer projections for mm -hmm. what if you take this action, this happens, this action, mm -hmm. this take, this mm -hmm. happens. And um, even those don't really know because you exactly. know, I, I heard some statisticians and virologists saying, um, or epidemiologists, I guess, saying no model is accurate, right. but some are helpful. That's there a good are, way to look at they it. They said yeah. there are tons of models out there. Not a single one is is a hundred percent accurate, but some of them mm -hmm. can be helpful. So right, exactly. Keep that in mind. Not that mm -hmm. that we can't predict what would have happened, and we can't predict what might happen. And for me, what has been so helpful is to think about that in the context of the people having to make these very difficult decisions, and just mm -hmm. saying, you know what, that. I need to extend some grace to that person making that decision or those people making those decisions because they don't know either. And they are, they're the ones that have to have their decision on public record, you know? And, exactly. Exactly. And yeah. No matter what they do, they're going to get criticized. So I anyway. think it's so interesting when we think about God's omniscience and the fact that, you know, God is all knowing and for decades, I just pictured that as, yeah, God knows everything that's happening. And what I started to realize, and I know you and I have had a conversation about this passage and, and its impact on me, but like God knows all the contingencies also. And what mm -hmm. really drove that home is in Matthew where Jesus is talking to certain cities. And he says, if uh, Sodom and Gomorrah had seen the miracles that, you, that you've seen, they would have repented. And so that's not, that's not even God knowing everything that has happened, is happening, and will happen. That's God knowing all of what might have happened. And that just blows my mind. Um, I love that. God's omniscience, yeah. Well, and you see like in the in the parable of Lazarus, the Lazarus that is the rich in, man in Abraham's bosom, mm -hmm. and then there's the rich man. In that parable, Jesus talks about how the rich man that is in, I guess, what we would call hell. It was, right. I, I don't know mm -hmm. what they called it then, Sheol, or mm -hmm. I don't know what it was. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the rich man was like parched. He was, you know, in the fire, yeah. wanted water. And he said, at least let me go back as a, as a spirit and tell my kids that they need right. to repent. Mm -hmm. And in that, I think it says, even if you were to even go back, they, they still wouldn't. Well, and even if they saw someone rise from the dead, they wouldn't believe. And he knows. Right. He knows so that was, that was an interesting contingency on the mm -hmm. flip side. Like, even exactly. if, like, yes. Yeah. But anyway. So speaking of parables, I have a funny story with my kids. Yeah. So I forget what we were talking about, what led to the discussion, but we got on the topic of forgiveness. And so I said, you guys, do you guys know this, the parable of the unmerciful servant? And <clears throat> so one of my kids says, like, honestly, you, like, you can make a comedy sketch out of this. I'm going to kind of butcher it, but <laughs> put yourself into this. Like, this was really funny. <laughs> I'm telling you up front. So one of my kids is like, oh, yeah, that's the one where the, the rich man gives his servant some money. I'm like, no, 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 not the, the parable of the talent. So, okay. So I started to tell them this story. I'm like, so there was this king and there was a servant who owed him like millions of dollars. And the king said that he was going to forgive it. And then one of my other kids is like, oh yeah, but then he went and he dug a hole and he put the money in the hole. I'm like, no, 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 this isn't the parable of the talents. And then I keep going and like two or three other times, they're like, oh yeah. And then, and then he says that since you earned money, I'm like, this has nothing to do with talents, uh -huh. nothing to do with interest. It's just like a king forgiving a servant. <laughs> it was really oh, funny. Oh, that is funny. <laughs> Don't you love those? Like, there are so many moments where I'm just like, this, this should be like on a sitcom, you know, this could uh -huh, be exactly. sitcom material because yeah, it's just yeah, that so would be funny. like the, the Christian, uh, the Christian sitcom. Wouldn't that be fun? I don't think it's oh. been done. Like a Christian family sitcom, like a pastor's family or something. I don't think it has. That's true. That would be, especially if it was funny. So because right, it would be a comedy thing. Not yeah. A, yeah, yeah, but what I mean is like if it was actually funny comedy, because unfortunately I feel like sometimes you get these, you know, not every sitcom is funny, but the mm -hmm. things that I find the most funny are the ones where it's so true that you have to exactly. laugh. Like it's well, just over the top be, true. You have to be a little bit irreverent in order to be funny. 
Yeah. And I think some Christians do have trouble with that. Like, I think it would be very hard to be a Christian comedian because you, you can't be so picture perfect, you know, that, that it's not funny at all. But you also, like, you definitely don't want to be offensive or crass or anything like that. So I think it'd be hard. But that would be fun. So that's going to be our new project. We're going to make a, 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 a Christian sitcom that is actually funny. So what do you want to do? Do you want to do the pastor's family or should we do something different? No, I think a pastor's family would be funny. So I actually, after we had the conversation about Christian comedians, mm -hmm. I have been Googling Christian comedians just because I have found Christian comedy, just clean comedy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I was folding laundry the other day and I just, I, I went on YouTube and I found a Christian comedian and I just listened to the whole like 50 minute thing while yeah. I was cleaning and doing laundry and stuff. And it was so like just refreshing, like laughing oh, out loud. Cool. So mm -hmm. Michael Jr. is, is the guy that I was listening to and he is a little irreverent, but I didn't find anything that he said offensive. And at the okay. very end, he gave this awesome testimony of how oh, God like neat. helped him through um, doing comedy in a prison. Wow. And <clears throat> yeah, it was, it was really, I, I thought he was awesome. So yeah, his That's name cool. is Michael Jr. He is funny. I, I found a couple that were not funny. <laughs> right, right. So this guy was awesome though. He had a really good act and um, I just, laughter is so important, but yes. Yeah, so let's go back. Christian comedy that is based on a pastor's family. You know what it kind of reminds me of? It would be sort of like the mom's night out movie. Right. Like, I thought they, right. like, I thought they were perfect because it was very, very funny. Um, but it, it dealt with some serious things, you know, in terms of like, there's a lost baby and things like that. Yeah. And then, um, but it's, it's all like family friendly. Yeah. So. You have to have your full house moment with the the, the music in the everything. background, exactly. you know, the music in the background, the heart to heart conversation, it gets really <laughs> real. And then, but it's super mm -hmm. funny all the other times. I think that'd be really funny. I so think it, it could be, be like a pastor's family with, there needs to be like, I feel like there has to be a grumpy grandpa who lives with them and talks without his teeth in. I think that that is a deal breaker. <laughs> like we have to have the toothless grumpy grandpa <laughs> yes. back in my day. <laughs> yeah, and then you have to have the super innocent teenage daughter who has the like not so great, you know, like leather jacket, chains, and motorcycle tattooed biker Best boyfriend. Friend. Oh, boyfriend. boyfriend! Yes, let's do it. Yeah, and but she's super innocent and super funny and and just clueless. But the and the biker guy is kind of like you know like an unlikely but good guy. Yeah, I know absolutely. He's but the dad doesn't like him. Yeah, but he's going to save the toothless grandpa's life. Yes. Because he was a lifeguard <laughs> one summer and he knows CPR. So when the toothless grandpa starts to choke on that piece of steak that he wasn't supposed to eat without his teeth in, that's right. Biker boyfriend's going to save that, that grandpa's life. <laughs> and then he gains the respect and approval of the pastor dad. Yeah. Okay. And let's add, I think this would be fun. So they've got the teenage daughter, but then they had like a whoopsie surprise baby like later on. Except people think like when they're just out in public and stuff, they think that the baby is the teenagers. And so they get, you know what I mean? Like I they get the snotty meant, looks. And I things. thought you meant that the teenage daughter had the whoopsie baby. And I'm like, whoopsie. is this Christian comedy? <laughs> no, no, no. The, the, the she parents. was going to be innocent. <laughs> okay. Yes. Oh, that's a good one. Wouldn't and the parents. Cute? Yes. That, mm -hmm. yeah. The surprise baby at middle age. That's a good mm -hmm. one. I like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we need like one more kind of thing. We need, um, we need a very, very persnickety church lady who's always in their business. Kind of like Mrs. Yes. Lind from Anna Green Gables. You remember her? Oh yes. Yes. Yeah. Kind of like the, the busy body. I'm going to tell you how things are run around here lady. Yes, I like that. There needs to be an animal also, but not a monkey. I don't like monkeys on TV shows. I think they need a goat. A goat? That could they be have good. A, goat with a, pet goat. a goat with personality or a potbelly so pig. A pig or pigs are fun. Um, it lives in the house. A potbelly you know pig I, yeah. in the house. You know what I've never seen in a TV show would be a parrot. And they're pretty smart. Like you could probably train a parrot to do some, you know, TV show types of things. I would think. Right, a Bible verse quoting parrot. 
Oh, that would be good. And just at the right time too. It wouldn't be yes. just repeating. It would like interject. But it's always like the wrong verse. And so like <laughs> the family's about, you know, like the family's having their full house moment where they're all like hugging and reconciling and it's really happy and sweet. And the parrot will say something like, um, I don't know, what's a really depressing Bible verse? Something, <laughs> something from, from Lamentations. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all is, all Gnashing is. Gnashing of teeth. Gnashing point. of teeth. Yeah. <laughs> but it would also, when the teenage daughter and her biker boyfriend start mm -hmm. maybe kissing, it will interject something appropriate, like, you know. Exactly. About but we chastity. have a family, we have a family friend who their rule, um, what was their role? This is like with like late teen, young adult kids. It was like one foot had to always be on the floor. Like if you're cuddling on the couch, like at least one foot's got to be on the, like touching the floor. <laughs> so you can't end up horizontal. So foot on the floor, foot on the floor. That's good. Oh gosh. We need to, we need to pursue this. Let's do it. Let's we do, do it. We totally do. All right. Well, you guys heard it here first. Yep. <laughs> We'll come up with anyway, a name in our next episode. We'll have to yes, come up with yes, a name. We well, should we jump into our just for fun since, you know, we've been so serious up until now? I know. We need to lighten things up a little. What is our <laughs> just for fun? All right. Um, I've got a couple here. I'm trying to think a good one. Let's see. Don't make right. it too good because I'm not, I'm not great spur of the moment. So, okay. you know. Design your ideal quarantine date night. Oh, wait, real quick, quick question. Like, has anyone in your family had a birthday or having a birthday coming up? Have you had to figure something like that out? Yeah, my husband, Matt, had a oh, birthday that's right. mm -hmm. on the 7th. Yeah, so we had, um, and it was a really good day. It actually was a great day. We, um, yeah, we ended up, mo most of it revolved around food. So I made, yeah. like, like, my daughter and I made a dinner that he really likes, and we baked a cake, and Fun. You know, and the kids did some stuff and I don't know, it was, it was very quiet, but it was really nice. We don't typically like go for a, our adult birthdays. We don't go out mm -hmm. a whole lot. Sometimes we'll go out on a date night or something, but yeah, usually it's pretty low key anyway. So it wasn't that much different from. Okay. Do you have an anniversary coming up? When's your anniversary? August 28th. Okay. So, so it's hopefully things a while. Will be a yeah, yeah. Our anniversary is in about a month. It's June fifth, and um, but no, anyway, you had, I missed your birthday. Yeah, I never like I never mention or make a big deal. But yeah, I had a birthday a couple weeks ago. Yes, I and, knew it was coming up, and I meant yeah. to. Yeah, I missed your birthday. I'm sorry. No, I I always like and it like slips under the radar. And it's not that I dislike getting older. I just don't like people feeling weird, like they've got to make a big deal about it. But it was really fun. Scott um, made a super yummy like seafood dinner. Oh, so that that's really what the good. seafood dinner was. Mm -hmm. We had the conversation about the dinner, yes. but I yeah. did not put two and two together. And that it was your birthday. my son, he was so cute. He, he made me like uh, sort of breakfast in bed. Like he, it was really cute. It was like French toast and a little scrambled egg. And he had his brother since um, my youngest is one he likes to cook, but he doesn't know how to use a coffee maker. So he had his brother help him make me a cup of coffee. It was very Aww, cute. So I got, really nice. yeah, my kids made me breakfast. We had that really yummy seafood dinner. I think that was one of the days. I think that was the day I watched um, Phantom of the Opera or something like that. Like I got to just sort of oh, sit and watch cool. really nice fun and um my present was a hammock which I've been making a ton of use of so, oh that's so neat yeah it was very nice and then um yeah my husband's is in just another couple weeks and so I'm trying to, to figure out that but anyway going back to a date night what would be imagine like two weeks ago quarantine because I know here in Alaska we're getting a few of the restrictions lifted but let's go back to like you can't go anywhere and you want to do a date night what are you going to do I would say because it's nice out we would do like a maybe a bike ride and a picnic so we would get oh, like fun. get With take the out would it be just you two if it was a date night it would just be us like uh -huh. the kids are old enough that we'll leave yeah, our 14 year old with the bit. other two for yeah. a little bit so yeah i think we would get takeout and somehow transport it <laughs> um mm -hmm. and do like a bike ride maybe to kincaid fun. park you know, oh it's so look, pretty yeah overlooking the bluff you know, the bluff mm -hmm. up there or yeah somewhere that sounds really have nice. like an outdoor picnic, picnic weather and... permitting 
I love that. Yeah. How about you guys? That's neat. So I'm trying to think like we're, we're pretty good when there's not a pandemic going on. We're pretty good about like going out if not every month, like at least every other month, you know, we'll go out for a meal and we spend a decent amount of time together. So in terms of like just making it special and romantic, I think that like we really enjoy, Scott and I have really enjoyed taking long walks together. Mm -hmm. That's been really fun. So probably it would start with a really long walk and then we'd come back home and cook some kind of, you know, slightly fancy meal and have that and just maybe like have the kids eat dinner while we were on our walk and then send them upstairs for computer game time or something. And then, so we'd cook dinner together. Now, if it were me, the next thing we would do is like play a couple board games. Although my husband like just doesn't like board games. So probably wouldn't happen. And it would end with, um, you know, watching something together, something funny or, or something like that. So yeah. It's watching um, a Christian comedy about a family with a pastor for a dad and a parrot. Yeah, well, I heard about this show that sounds really cool, and they've got a pet <laughs> parrot that like quotes Bible verses at weird <laughs> times. Isn't that funny? <laughs> okay, should I should I run my other sitcom idea by you for a Christian sitcom? Why not? We're on We've a roll. Already, uh, <laughs> we're on a roll. Okay. So your family is watching Psych now, or at least you and Matt are watching some Psych. Oh, we forgot. We watched a few oh, episodes forgot. I'm so and then we forgot Psych okay. and we have not gotten back okay. into so it. So the premise for people who don't know, it's, it's this guy who's basically just very, very, very observant to the point where the detective or the police department thinks he's a psychic and he helps him solve crimes. That's, that's kind of the premise, but really he's just totally observant. So again, going back to like, Christian comedy being hard because you can't be too squeaky clean, but you also can't be irreverent. So I don't know where this falls in it. I think it could be done. There's somebody, it's a very similar premise, except instead of thinking that he's psychic, they think that he just like has a direct connection to God. Like he hears from the Holy Spirit about like who the criminal is or where the victim's been, you know, trapped or things like that. But really it's just somebody who is hyper observant about things. So that's my, that's my other sitcom I'm going to pitch. That could be interesting. That could so, be interesting. Yeah, for all of the film executives watching and listening to our podcast, just I'm get sure in there touch are, with us. I'm sure there are several. I'm yes, sure there I are have, at least several. I have nothing else going on this week, so I could sign a contract, you know, sometime over the weekend, I think would be fine. Mm-hmm. We don't want to rush into it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Very good all right, idea. So all right, so that was our that was our sitcom um, brainstorm session plus our just for fun. So should we dive into our, our actual devotional now? I guess. I mean, you know, who has time to pray when all this other great <laughs> stuff is going on? Oh, that reminds me. Have you thought more about our conversation about like prayer feeling lazy? Have you thought through that? Because I know we were going to kind of put a pin in that discussion and come back to it. That's true. I've been thinking about that, and yeah, I think that. Definitely, um, I have this idea that if I'm sitting still, I feel guilty about it. And, mm-hmm. and so whether it's sitting down to read a book or sitting down to read the Bible or sitting down to pray, mm-hmm. I think that might be why, um, I think that might be why I, um, am better about praying on the fly than I am mm, about just mm-hmm. sitting down. Cause I remember in college, I didn't have that perception. You know, I think about yeah. college as being a time when I would go off and just spend hours just being with God mm-hmm. or sitting in a mm-hmm. coffee shop, reading my Bible. And yeah. You know, so I, yeah, I think that's part of it. And I think the deeper, deeper root of that is do I truly believe that prayer is the real work? Right. Do I think that the other work is real work? And that's something I always struggle with too. So I think that Mm -hmm. for me is the heart condition I need to deal with. Do I believe that prayer is moving reality, that God is actually moving through prayer? Or do I feel like it's more valuable to go out and do something, do stuff, Mm -hmm. spiritual or not? Yeah. No, I, I, I get that for sure. Yeah. So 
Interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. So I've been thinking about that and I have been taking a little bit of time each morning to just be still. And I even, I'm trying to think when it was, but something, I think I was sitting down and reading the Bible and one of my kids came in and I was glad. I was like, hey, my kid is actually seeing me sitting reading the Bible. Mm -hmm, so that was mm -hmm. kind of neat because I think that's a good thing. I think that's really a good positive thing for them to see. It is, but I think there's also part of me that maybe over literifies that's not a word um like takes too literally we'll go with that mm -hmm. <laughs> the idea of like go into your closet shut the door mm -hmm. create your father who's unseen like i don't want it to be you know like our our acts of worship to god are our quiet time basically if you want to call it that like it's supposed to be a private thing right you know but I, you're definitely you want to exemplify that for your kids. And so it's a little hard to find the balance between that, you know, like similar to tithing, you know, like I want our kids to see us tithing, right. but I also recognize we're not supposed to like announce it and things like that. So that's, that's another sort of dichotomy or struggle that's a little bit there. Um, and then I think for me, cause I've been thinking through this more too, just trying to peel back the layers of why I've got this issue of feeling like, it's wrong for the kids to see me praying or something like that. Like, I also don't want them to feel guilty. Like, oh, look at mom. She spends so much time with God and I don't, or this is how adults treat God, but not kids. I don't know. Like, so it's, it's just, there's lots of, lots of layers to it. Yeah, no, I can totally see those things too. Just, you know, mm -hmm. not wanting, and I think that's all of parenting and, and especially with yeah. spiritual shepherding is like, mm -hmm. I don't want to screw this up. I don't want to give them a bad, yeah. I don't want to be the reason they have a bad view of God, or I don't mm -hmm. want to be the reason they have a bad view of Christianity. And I, mm -hmm. I deal with that with like volunteering at church when we mm -hmm. go and mm -hmm. the kids will start to get, um, like, oh man, we got to sit through both services again. We got to mm -hmm. do this. We got to do that. And I, and I wonder, okay, is it good for them to see us? We pulled back a little bit from that so that we're not quite as busy as we used to be, but it used to be every single week we were there, both services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was that question of, do I want my kids to see the value of serving in a church and right. the joy that comes from, serving God in that way or, mm -hmm. or then on the other side of it, are they going to grow up and think I am never, ever going to volunteer ever? Mm -hmm. It's, it, I think it's that same concept of the balance, the balance of, of showing your kids who God is and mm -hmm. what the Christian walk is. And yeah, it's hard. Okay, so going back to our sitcom, the pastor's wife is going to struggle with these same questions, mm -hmm. but she's going to have a best friend that they have like discussions like this and they get to talk about because, you know, those are real questions. It is, yeah. And they get to go to a real coffee shop and actually like drink coffee. Oh, there's going to be like a, a super cute, um, like a Christian coffee shop that oh, has like yeah. all kinds of Bible verses up on the wall and like a super cute decor. And that's where the, the two best friends are going to meet and have these conversations. Oh, I like that. And we maybe kinda... they even record them. Like maybe they could be like YouTubers or I don't know, maybe like they could have a podcast together or something. Uh, and it could be related to prayer. That could be. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> all right. <laughs> We're kind of dorks. To be continued. That's right. That's right. This will be the newest section. It'll be like what's going on in our fictional sitcom that doesn't even exist except for in our minds. We'll give, you know, good. Like, hey, we'll be like, did you see the episode where like the daughter talked back to her dad and he almost slapped her, but then the grumpy grandpa came in and his teeth fell out and like everybody laughed and it just sort of dispersed all of the, the tension. <laughs> okay. So you're a, a lot of Terry Christian suspense author and sitcom screenplay writer. Exactly. Hey, it'll work. I think it will. <laughs> what's, what's your role going to be? Because I want you to be involved in this too. I'm going to be the faithful sidekick. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll proofread this, the screenplays. That works. That works. All right. Let's dive into our devotional. Okay. So day 14 
this is the last day. I can't believe this is the last day of our um, COVID-19 devotional. If you want to get this full devotional, you can go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash be the light, all one word. And day 14, um, we're going to be praying for unity among believers, um, which is definitely, um, what would you say, appropriate because of our discussion of, sure. kind of the the clashing that's happening, the irritation and the, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, yeah. But, you know, we want to be unified with everyone, but absolutely as believers, um, the scripture is from Matthew 5, 14 to 16. This is the ESV version. You are the light of the world. A city, on, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And, you know, whether we like it or not, we are lit up. People are watching what we're doing as the church and as believers pretty much in every situation. There are either people that are looking for guidance or people that are looking to catch us in doing bad things. Um, and it doesn't mean, um, but our motive should never be to be a light so that people see something that's false. I think that's kind of a misconception. I think rather than pretending that we're something we're not, um, like Alana, I think we try to be real. I mean, I know we mm -hmm. air our dirty mm -hmm. laundry on this podcast because yep. we struggle. And I think to show how can you struggle in a way where you keep striving toward being like Jesus and, and keep moving forward and acknowledging the, the downfalls. So yeah, anyway, but yeah, unity among believers right now is really important because I, I've seen believers on all different sides of, of the COVID-19 issue as far as how it should be handled. But as long yeah. as we're keeping our eyes on Jesus and conducting ourselves in a way that is worthy of of, of Christ's example, you know, mm -hmm. I think that's, that could be really powerful. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it's, it's good to be a critical thinker. It's good to not take everything at face value, but I think it's, it's even more important to recognize not everybody's going to take that information and come to the same conclusion that you are. And that's okay. Going back to what we said, like, we're never going to know all the contingencies. Yeah, absolutely. All righty. All right, you know, well, we should go back and count how many times the word contingency was used in this episode. I'm sure we just uh, broke a record. <laughs> I think I will go back. I'll do that. I'll, I'll go back yeah. and I'll, I'll ding everyone. I'll, I'll leave it in the show notes. That's not, right. Not really. <laughs> no. I think there are, there are slightly better things to do with our time. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, let's pray. Father God, we praise you for being the King of Kings ruler of an invisible kingdom that we have the incredible honor of being part of. We confess that like bickering siblings, we often get off course, arguing and hair splitting, judging and criticizing. We choose our camps. We dig our heels in, often at the expense of cooperation that could unleash kingdom power in a world that so desperately needs it. We thank you that no matter what our difference is, because you are our king, we can go to you for help in checking our pride and sinful attitudes. Because of your Holy Spirit in us, we can submit to your testing and leading and come away with a renewed love for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we open our hearts to your searching and correction. Reveal any sinful attitudes, wrong thinking, bitterness, or resentment toward our brothers and sisters in Christ. Uproot them before they take hold. Mobilize us as the church with a capital C to come together with one heart and mind, with your eyes to see each other and the hurting world around us. Show us how we can come together as many diverse members of the body of Christ to accomplish the kingdom work you have for us to do. Be glorified in us, Lord. Only with your help, submitted to your kingship, can we hope to be the city on a hill that you've designed us to be. Be glorified in your church today as we navigate uncharted waters with the COVID-19 crisis. Through us, let your light shine before others that they would see our good works and give glory to you our loving Father, our glorious King. In the powerful name of your Son, Jesus, amen. 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 I feel kind of sad that we're at the end of the 14 days of the devotional. It is. That's, that went quick. 
Yeah. You know, when we first started, I'm like 14 days. I hope it doesn't last that long. <laughs> and right. here we are on day like 50 or something that like that. Funny. I mean, it just, yeah, it is. It's funny. And yeah, mm-hmm. who knows? But yeah. I guess we need to write another one. Yeah, I guess we do. Well, I'll work on the sitcom. You work on the next devotional and we'll meet up again on Monday. See you Monday. They'll both be finished. <laughs> That's Actually, right. That's right. knowing you, they it will be like I'll have a whole season, season one. Of a season. You'll have season one ready. <laughs> you know how my brain works. <laughs> All right. Well, have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.